if I can't carry a tune in the paper sack, but it's good to see everybody here this morning. I think uh, good to see that you survived the blizzard of 2017 and the hard freeze that we had here. It's good to see everybody out and about. I want to thank Franz for filling in for me last Sunday. Uh, believe it or not, we were in Mason last Sunday. Uh, but it is good to, to be here this morning to worship God with y'all today. If you would please stand and turn with me to Mark chapter 1. I'd like to read the first three verses and then we'll use our text verses out of uh, verses 14 through 15. It says, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his plan straight. Now, he's talking about John the Baptist here. Those words apply to all of us as Christians. And then down in verse 14 and 15, it says, Now after John was arrested, Jesus came unto Galilee, proclaiming the gospel of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Father, we're just thankful for our time here together. And Father, we're just thankful for everyone who's here today. And Father, we just ask a special blessing upon them and upon this church. And Father, we just ask that as we enter into this new year, that New Hope Church would be a shining light for you all during this year. And Father, we just ask that you forgive us for we fail you every day. And Father, we ask you to continue to bless us. These things we ask in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. <coughs> As we begin this new year, 2017, we really expect it to be better than 2016. You know, we hold out this hope and we pray that things are going to be better for us in this coming year. We always celebrate uh, on New Year's Eve the, the changing of the clock at, at 12 o'clock or when it signifies the beginning of a new year. We're all happy. We celebrate that something different is taking place and we expect something different to happen. Yet we continue to do the same things over and over expecting a expecting a different outcome. So in order for 2017 to be better than 2016, there's some things that we have to do to make it better. And that's what we're going to talk about this morning. Those things that we need to look toward to make 2017 a much better year than 2016. Like I said before, you know, we hope and we pray that 2017 is going to be better than 2016, but we have always this doubt lingering in our mind that things are really going to be better. And that's because we live in a world that's accustomed to hearing nothing but bad news. The front pages of our newspapers are filled with accounts of tragedies that produce suffering for individuals, for families, and for whole nations, as a matter of fact. And, and more time is allotted to bad news on the radio and TV than anything else. And you can always find something bad that's happened to somebody either on Twitter or Facebook or any of the social medias. It's so bad that sometimes I think that, uh, that bad news is more important than good news. We look for that. But here on this second Sunday of this new year, I think we need to focus our minds and our hearts on the good news about God. Because God is the God of good news. You know, to hear the good news about God can, can cause us to have some good feelings toward him, good feelings toward his people, all of this church. And I think it might even create a deeper faith in us, and it might actually cause somebody to have faith in him and accept him as their Lord and Savior. But we have to have him. We have to have this deeper faith in God as we approach this new year. You know, some people associate nothing but bad news with God. And why is that? It's because the devil has been misrepresenting the nature and the character of God from the beginning of human history. You know, some listen only to the suggestions of Satan. 
There's got to be people out there that are, that are not listening to God. They're listening to Satan because we see that on the front pages of our newspapers and we hear that in our radio and our, our TVs that there are people out there who are not nice people. And they've got to be listening to Satan's suggestions because Satan has incorrectly related the nature and the purpose of God. They don't know like we do that Satan is the greatest liar of all times. Satan is the man who invented lies. <laughs> you know, some people associate God only with their guilty conscience. You know, their, it's their dirty little secrets and their evil past that cause them to fear God when they actually dread the possibility of a confrontation with him. <clears throat> their pride prevents them from asking forgiveness for their sin. And their misunderstanding of God's nature and character make it difficult <clears throat> For them to believe that God's purpose for them is nothing more than love and mercy mm-hmm. toward them. That's God's purpose. That's right. So today I'd like for us to look into the Bible and discover some of this good news about God so that our hearts can be encouraged as we approach this new year. And some of us might even find it possible, like I said before, to put our faith and our trust in him. Now. The background on that is is that the wise men and the prophets of the Old Testament recognized and they responded to the good news about God. Isaiah said in chapter 40, verse 9, You who bring good news to Zion, go up on a high mountain. (coughs) You who would bring good news to Jerusalem, lift up your voice with a shout. Lift it up. Do not be afraid. Say to the towns of Judah, here is your God. You know, all throughout. The book of Isaiah, you know, we hear this same familiar tone that comes from Isaiah. And in chapter in chapter 52, verse 7, he says, How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, <clears throat> who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, your God reigns. All of that is great news. It's all good news. And it's all news about the God that we serve. But... The greatest good news about God is revealed in the coming of the Christ. You know, when Zechariah was he was in the temple, and a divine visitor announced to him the uh, the mighty work <coughs> of God that was to come to be, that was to happen in the immediate future. He said, and the angel answered, answering him, said unto him, I am Gabriel, that stand in the presence of God, and I am sent to speak unto thee to show thee these glad tidings. Now. We read that in Luke a couple of Sundays ago, Luke chapter 2, verse 10, where the the angel appeared to the shepherds in the field, and he told them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. This is nothing more than telling us that the Bible is a record of the activity of a good God who brings us good news concerning himself. Now, the word gospel means a good message. And it points out the good intentions of the kingdom of God and of salvation through faith in Jesus Christ on the basis of his substitutionary death, his burial, his resurrection, and his ascension back to the throne of the Father in heaven. All of these events and the interpretation of them are wrapped up in this one word, gospel. And that means, which is absolutely, absolutely the gospel of God. I want to look at five examples where the good news of God is related to us in the scriptures. Now, there's a whole lot more than just these five, but I think these five this morning are going to, to, to serve to point out to us the greatness of the God that we serve this morning. And the first is, it's the good news about God was spoken in the Garden of Eden following Adam and Eve's sin. You know, we read in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15 of, of how God said to the serpent, he said, I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head and thou shall bruise his heel." In this verse of scripture now, we we read of God's divine decree to defeat and destroy the evil that had come into the world, that had robbed Eden of its beauty, and that had removed uh, 
the privilege of humankind of being present in God's presence. And God's saying here, at the beginning of human history, he's announcing that there is hope and that there's a plan that's been designed for forgiveness, for redemption, and for deliverance. So the God of good news has spoken. Secondly, the good news of God was announced to Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 through 3. You know, and then Paul goes on to affirm that the gospel was preached during the days of Abraham in Galatians chapter 3, verse 8, when he said, Scripture foresaw that God would justify the Gentiles by faith and announced the gospel in advance to Abraham. All nations will be blessed through you. <clears throat> so the God of good news here, was he was seeking to get into and open up the hearts and the minds of all the people during Abraham's day. And from the very beginning, God intended that all of his people would be missionary people. And he desires that you and I today get involved in communicating the good news of his love to those who are in spiritual darkness and who are in despair. And God also announced the good news to Moses. If we did a study of Exodus, chapter 3, specifically verses 6, 8, and 10, those verses show us the redemptive qualities of a gracious God who was plan planning to deliver Israel from the tyranny and the bondage of Egypt. Now, this was some really good news for those people who were in slavery. They were happy about that. They were looking forward to God working in their lives. But Moses, like a lot of modern-day followers of Jesus Christ, offered a number of excuses as to why he should not be personally involved in communicating this good news to Pharaoh. Moses offered the excuse of lack of personal fitness in Exodus 3, verse 11. He says, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh? And then he offers the excuse of inadequate knowledge of the nature and the character of God in Exodus 3.13. Moses offered the excuse of a lack of authority in Exodus 4.1. <clears throat> and then in 4 verse 10, <clears throat> he offers the excuse of a lack of speaking ability. And finally, we've talked about this before, that in verse 13 of chapter 4, he gets right down to the case here. And he demonstrated his lack of faith as being the real reason for offering excuses. You know, we read in the following verse, in chapter, in verse, in chapter 4, verse 14, that the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. And it was kindled against Moses because of Moses' unwillingness to be a part of the effort to communicate the good news of the deliverance and the promises of peace and victory that God had made to his people, Israel. I think it probably be, would be safe in saying that if we neglect to cooperate with God in, in, his com in communicating his good news, if we did not convey to everybody his plan for all of mankind and what he's got in store for us, I think that'd be pretty displeasing to him today, wouldn't it? just like he was displeased with Moses. And then Jesus began and closed his ministry by emphasizing the good news about God. From the very beginning, Jesus concentrated on announcing the good news about God in verse 14 of our text this morning. And throughout his entire earthly ministry, he concentrated on communicating the good news of God's love, his grace, his mercy, his forgiveness, his purpose, and his power. And then following Jesus' resurrection in Mark chapter 16, verse 15, he, com he commanded his church to what? To tell the good news about God to all the people and to take it to the ends of the earth. And then in Acts chapter 8, verse 4, it tells us that the early church was excited over the good news from God. When was the last time we were excited about the good news from God? When was the last time we've had excitement in our life because of reading the Bible and understanding the good news about God? 
we've kind of become blase with it. Hey? We just take it in stride. But for these people, it was great news. And this gospel that he was that was being preached wasn't just good advice. The gospel was the good news from God about God that concerned all people. And then the gospel was about good news about what God was doing in the life, death, resurrection, and the ascension of Jesus Christ. He did all of those things for the benefit of the human race. And these people were excited about it. They were really excited over <clears throat> their new understanding of the love of God that was so great that it brought Jesus Christ to die a humi humiliating death on the cross just for them. And the early disciples were thrilled beyond words over the fact that in Jesus' resurrection, he had revealed that death was not the end and that the grave was not the goal in this life that we're living now. Immortality ceased to be a dream or a hope. It became a reality that was very real. And it's really wonderful, isn't it? It was wonderful for them. It was a reality and very wonderful for them. And it's a reality and it's very wonderful for us today. The good news and the latest news from God is that he loves us. He's got a wonderful plan for our life, and he wants to forgive us of our sins. He wants to deliver us from the power of sin. He wants to grant you and me the gift of wisdom for greater living in this life. He wants to provide us with his divine energy that's going to enable us to do the work that he would have us to do in our world today. But the question is, is what have we done with this good news about God? Are we willing to respond to this good news? You know, God loves us. And we just have to accept this great truth in our mind. We have to put our, the confidence of our heart into this one thing, knowing that God loves us. And when we do that, then we can move forward with a new optimism and, and a new spirit of faith, a new spirit of faith and love as we enter into this new year of 2017. New hope. Let's make a promise to God this morning to take the good news of God to Cooper, Delta County, and the whole world in 2017. He has given us this place to launch these efforts from. He's given, provided us with the spiritual gifts, the talents that we need to get his word out to everybody. So let's give new hope to everybody that we meet in 2017. And just like we were given this new hope in 2020. Amen. As Miss Judy plays and, and we stand and sing hymn number 488, Just As I Am. If you need to make things right with God, please do that this morning. If you need to make a profession of faith or move your membership or if you need to rededicate your efforts this morning to work for God in the month ahead in 2017 you come as we sing this morning Father, we just thank you for this good news that has been relayed to us in so many different ways over so many, so many years. And Father, we just ask a special blessing that you continue to bless this church, Father, and a special blessing on each and every one who's here today. And Father, as we go into this, 20, this year of 2017, Father, we just thank you for it, and we look forward to all the blessings that you're going to bestow upon us. 
And Father, as we leave here today, we just ask you to forgive us for those times when we know we're going to fail you, Father, because we're only human. But Father, we know that us being your sons and your daughters, that we can bask in your love and your protection and your blessings in this new year. Father, we just ask you to forgive us today before we fail you. And Father, just ask that you continue to bless us. These things we ask in Christ's name.